Hi everybody, my name is Ashutosh Malegaonkar and I am part of Cisco, Cisco DevNet. DevNet is the developer program from Cisco. Today what I'll be talking about is location and proximity services, especially in the indoor location arena. So let's get started. So before we start, I would like to give you a brief introduction about myself. Uh, I am from Pune. I grew up there and I went uh, to PICT for my undergrad. I graduated in 1994 and since then I've been in the industry. I worked at various companies like Wipro, AT&T, Aftec and then Cisco. So here at Cisco now I actually head up a co-creation lab in DevNet where we work with customers as well as like developers and partners to build innovative solutions on top of Cisco platforms. So let's get started for today. Okay, in this session, what I'm going to talk about is indoor location services. I'll give you some use cases that are related to these services as well as like, you know, some of those class of services where you will be able to like see how uh, your use cases can fit in that. Uh, the third one is that you will learn about uh, how Cisco uh, and what are the building blocks that you can use from Cisco in order to build indoor location services. With the first three steps that we talk about, I think that you will be ready to take off uh, so, so that you can actually build your own application for, for the hackathon. So what are location services? So location services describe a class of services that provide real-time information of location and proximity. And this is the definition of what location services are. Now, in terms of the difference between location and proximity, so location is telling you the real-time X, Y coordinate of a particular object versus proximity is telling you that this object is somewhere in this area. So for example, if I am in this room, uh, it uh, basically that is proximity and it's telling me that Ashutosh is in in proximity of this room versus if I am inside this room and it is telling me that Ashutosh is at X comma Y then that is the location of where that person is located so that's the difference between uh, location and proximity so given that you understand now what location and proximity means, let's look at some of the use cases that are associated with this. The first use case is about finding people and assets. So like for example, like in, in a retail store, if you are uh, trying to find experts uh, and assuming that like these experts are carrying like, you know, their phones, which are Wi-Fi enabled, or in fact, uh, if you have badges, which are maybe Bluetooth enabled, right? I am able to find where that person is on the sh like shop floor. So if I know that, then I'm able to actually like communicate with them. I can add more use cases related to finding people and assets. So that's the first use case. The second use case is about geofencing. Uh, and this is an important one because a lot of the retails, maybe offices have high, high value assets. And these high value assets, they don't want it to be like misplaced or like, you know, they, they move around. So what, what you can do is enable a geofence uh, in, in a particular area and say that if this object is like not in its original location, then I want to send out an, uh, an alarm. So that's the use case of what geofencing is. So you can enable a lot of other use case in this. So that's geofencing. The third one uh, or the third class is of navigation. So here what is happening is like uh, you are able to go from point A to point B, uh, very similar to what Google Maps does, but now uh, uh, this is for indoors. So like for example, I'm here to meet a person uh, uh, who's in, in room number 325. From where I'm located, uh, it tells you a detailed uh, like map of getting to that person. So that's that's an example of that. Or in fact, like you could also have examples where like I am in a museum and I'm moving from exhibit A to exhibit B to exhibit C. Now, when, and when I'm at exhibit A, I hear a particular uh, announcement versus when I'm at exhibit B, I hear a different announcement. So that's another place where you can start using navigation as well as proximity uh, to enable that application. 
The last one uh, over here is about workflow workforce uh, productivity and this is basically telling you that uh, in a particular location uh, what are how many people actually show up every day and this is very important for like retail or it is important in offices because some of the office furniture uh, sometimes never gets used or maybe a conference room is built but it's never getting used and there's a reason for it so maybe once I have that data we can actually make use of that information to, to do better productivity for, for your office. So that's the workflow's productivity use case. So given, given that now you know the, uh, the definition, you know some of the use cases, let's actually see what Cisco has to offer. So Cisco actually has something called as Meraki. Uh, and the reason I wrote modern networking there is because it is, uh, it is a set of networking equipment which is managed from the cloud. And as soon as it is managed from the cloud, you are able to actually do n number of applications on top of that uh, uh, equipment. So in this case, like the, there is something called as a scanning API. So that's the first one that we are going to talk about today. In fact, that's the one that will be used for proximity services. So the, for in the scanning API, what happens is that it is able to detect Wi-Fi phones or devices. It is able to also detect Bluetooth devices so that like, you know, I'm able to tell you where a particular person is uh, who has Bluetooth. The second set is basically what we uh, call as dashboard APIs or management APIs. Like you can enable an application where you are wanting to, you are wanting to write a, a firewall rule that is specifically uh, kick, which kicks in at 7 a.m. in the morning and actually exits at 8 p.m. in the evening. So you could write that as an application uh, workflow. So that's the second set of APIs. The last set is about splash page APIs. And this is an interesting one because like, you know, I happen to read some of the use cases that uh, or the problem statements that are posed uh, for SIH. And like, for example, I want to figure out attendance taking uh, or I want to do like, you know, punch in punch out times. Uh, you can actually use splash page APIs to do that. So, for example, every time I connect to an SSID, uh, this page shows up where you're actually wanting uh, to enter your maybe employee ID or your email address, whatever it is. And once I do that, like you're already logged in. So at that point, I have a time. Uh, at which you actually came in and you if you log out then you know the timeout when you went so that's the third uh, type of application that you can build so today as I said we'll be concentrating mostly on the scanning API uh, one of the things that uh, Meraki uses is like it uses rest API uh, so your application building becomes very simple and easy uh, as well as like, you know, you can enable it through like, you know, uh, web apps or mobile apps or even like machine to machine uh, kind of things. Uh, so that's that. And then finally, like, you know, the events that are generated from the Meraki uh, are sent to your webhook where you can actually make use of, of that information. So summarizing, right? I mean, as I said, uh, there is scanning API, dashboard API and splash page API. I suggest that you go to our site, which is the developer.cisco.com slash site slash Meraki and learn about these uh, APIs in detail. You'll find like, you know, sample code, you'll see some examples, etc. over there. So now that you understand the, that, let's actually like uh, do a deep dive in the location analytics API or like what we call a scanning API. So in order for you to enable that, what we uh, really need to do is we need to do three steps. Okay, the first step, uh, as you can see uh, over here, is to log in into the developer site, uh, which is the developer Meraki, uh, developer.meraki.com, and you need to basically enable that. Hey, I want to enable push APIs. That means I want to do scanning of of that information, uh, which is telling you that device is here, so that that information gets pushed down to you. So you need to do that. You also, there is something called as a validator key. Uh, and this validator key is important because that's how the security of the application is maintained. So that's the, the, that's the first step. The second step here is that once I enable it in the dashboard, 
then what I need to do is I need to actually go and write my own webhook or my own application. So in this case, uh, the application that you see here, it has two parts. The first part is a validator, which I'll talk about in a bit. And the second part is about uh, the, the post that message that comes from Meraki. And here you'll be getting a JSON, which you'll basically parse and write an app uh, business logic on top of it, top of it. So that's the second step. And the final step, as I said, is the validation key where like you saw the validation key in the dashboard. So Meraki Cloud, uh, it sends this validation uh, a request saying that, hey, send me the validation key and your application is supposed to send it back uh, so that like, you know, it knows that it is uh, in fact you who's on the other side. So that's basically the three step process. So at this time, let's actually do one thing. Let's actually go to uh, the actual site so this is the developer.meraki uh, site, right? This is the Cisco site, DevNet site. And as I said before, like we, we have the three use cases, which is the scanning API. Uh, this is the dashboard API. And uh, this one is the captive portal or the splash page API. So these are the three pages. And the second part of this is uh, about the Meraki dashboard. So here I've logged in into my, my uh, Meraki dashboard. Uh, you can also go to the sandbox, which is at DevNet sandbox, and then you'll be able to like log in in any of these instances that you see on the left hand side. So for now, let's just look at this. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a validate command and you see that it has actually failed uh, because it says response other than 200 came up. And the reason it is, is because we don't have an application running yet. So what we'll do now is we'll write an application. So given that this is this is the code that I'm going to use. So literally we'll cut and paste this application uh, and we will actually move on to uh, like my command window here or my xterm. And what I will do is I will just edit and show you this, this exact same application that's over there. Once I see this, uh, the only difference between what I had uh, on the website versus over here is now it is returning a validator key. Uh, that's that's one, right? And the second thing that it is doing is it is also printing the information that it got from Meraki. So just to for for this example, I'll be able to show you the JSON that comes back. So let's actually start this application. So I'm going to run it with Python. So the application is running now and uh, the application is running on port 5000. But what I've done is Meraki is actually sending it to a, a web accessible uh, URL, which is on ngrok, N-G-R-O-K, uh, which is running on my laptop. And what we will do is like, because this is the my first hello world, I'm doing this now so that uh, like, I don't have to like keep on up uploading my, my code in the cloud for now. So let's, uh, so, as you can see, I've already started receiving data from, from Meraki. And what you see here is like the reason it is all working is because it sent the validation and after the validation, it started sending uh, the, the information to you. So if you look at this, right, I mean, you can actually see that uh, here's, here's the a client, which is my client Mac address. Uh, what it is telling you is it is showing you the, the latitude and longitude of where that device is located as well like you know in this case it is not showing me the x and y but uh, if i actually upload a map to it then it will show me the x and y coordinate of that device so that is that is the second second part now once i have this what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to like uh, write your own logic on top of it so for example like here you can say if if the mac address uh, is this then I want to send an email out or an alert out so that's what you can do with with this so just to go back to the dashboard I want to just show that once I go back to the dashboard and I run the validate again uh, you'll see that the application is validated so this is this is pretty cool because now I know I wrote an application I mean I enabled it in my dashboard I wrote the, the web hook for it, I get the data and then uh, I can do whatever I want with that data. 
So like in, in our office, like just for kicks, what we did is we wrote an application that said every time our boss is in the building, we want to like light up uh, the, the building telling us that, hey, the boss is in the house. So, you know, you can make make some fun projects uh, like those. So uh, given given that, like, you know, now we understand how to enable it. Uh, I think like you guys are ready to take off. Uh, so what I would do as part of next steps is learn more about Meraki. So you can go to the Meraki website. Uh, then the second thing that you can do is go to Cisco DevNet's Meraki site, which is the one that I showed you and learn about like, you know, sample, get some sample code from there. We in fact have like links to our GitHub pages uh, so that you can download an application from there. Uh, the third one is about the sandbox. So what you can do is you can actually build out a sand like we have already built out the sandbox and you don't need to create your own account for Meraki. You can just go in and start playing with uh, some of those APIs. And finally, like, you know, uh, uh, the last one is about learning. And I highly recommend that you go and take this learning mo learning lab module where you will actually learn about how to write splash page applications, uh, uh, the location scanning application. In fact, like, you know, I've put an application over there where uh, I have an Alexa uh, saying, well, like, I can give a command saying that, hey, Alexa, start the guest Wi-Fi and it will turn on the guest Wi-Fi. Obviously, in that case, it is using the dashboard API, but that's an example of how you can actually start doing things. And I mean, just to give you an example of uh, this, uh, assume that like you are at a subway store, you own a subway store and like every day in the morning when I come in, I, I turn on the guest Wi-Fi every day in the evening when I go back, I turn off the guest Wi-Fi. So you can actually just talk to your Alexa, say start guest Wi-Fi and when you go say stop guest Wi-Fi and it all goes away. So those are the kind of things that you can start building by yourself. So before I stop, uh, I would really like to thank uh, everybody for tuning in today and understanding and giving me uh, this opportunity to present. I would also suggest that you go to our site, uh, which is the cs.co sih 2018. Uh, if you haven't registered to DevNet, uh, th definitely do that and also learn about other technologies that you can use uh, from Cisco. Thank you again and wishing you all the best. Thanks.